Welcome back to the In The Lead show. My name is Jennifer Sang, and you're listening to a podcast dedicated to bringing leadership to everyday people. Welcome to the show. Welcome back to the In The Lead show. This is episode number 20. And today I wanted to focus the podcast around talking about how gratitude can make you a better leader. And what I mean by leader is how we lead ourselves, that principle of how I'm showing up in my everyday life. So not just in a work setting or with my family or friends, all of it, like how am I leading myself to be able to show up? in the way that I want to, that is aligned to my purpose, who I am as a whole person and how I want to, sh- you know, just bring my skills and my talents and my energy to everything that I do. So I wanted to focus the conversation today on gratitude and, you know, this is aligning with the Thanksgiving holiday here in the U S. So when this episode drops on Thursday, it will actually be on Thanksgiving. So I know that a lot of us in the U S are thinking about, you know, gratitude and being what we're thankful for. And all of those things usually are centered around that holiday. So I thought it was a great way to create a topic around how we can cultivate gratitude and how that can also make us a better leader and how it can make us more productive so that we can be whole, resourceful, capable human beings and show up as the best leader that we can for ourselves, for our teams, and for our families, friends, and communities. Um, gratitude to me, though, I've always had kind of a an interesting feeling towards it personally, meaning I always feel like gratitude can sometimes feel like it's full of cliches and platitudes and things that we just kind of say and sound on the surface as like really good things, but it doesn't feel authentic to me. So for me, when I think about gratitude, I think of really, really deep appreciation for the things that I've been through, for the things and the lessons that I've had to learn in my life and how that has shaped me into the leader of myself that I am today. So You know, I think there are some people who love journaling and who love writing down things that they appreciate or things that they have in their life that they're thankful for. And that's really great. I personally am not a big journaler. Um, Personally, I'm just, I I love to write, but journaling for me is just never really stuck. But for me, it's a lot of time spent reflecting and just noticing what are some of the things that I've learned. And a lot of the ways that I do that just on an ongoing basis is through my work in therapy. It's a lot of spending time with what's coming up for me and then trying to find the lessons, the the learning, the appreciation, the compassion, the empathy for all of those things that have happened in my own life. So I think developing some kind of a practice with that is been really has been really key for me but whatever works for you if you're a journaler and you like to write things down one tip i would love to give you is that if you do like writing things down instead of writing down things that you might be thankful for that feel kind of surface level where it's like i'm you know things like i'm grateful for my health or i'm grateful for my job if you could start thinking about some of the really big things that have happened in your life maybe traumas maybe things that you've been through that have caused you some pain And if you can find a way to figure out how that trauma or that thing that happened to you impacted you, how has it made you a different person? How has it shaped you um, towards the person becoming the person that you are today? And one great example of that might be like, let's say you suffered a job loss and let's say it was really, really traumatizing to you because maybe you were in that career for a really, really long time. You had a lot of your self-identity and self-worth attached to that job. So when you lost that job, let's say maybe you felt a great sense of loss, like your purpose and your identity was broken in some way. If you can look at that experience and then look at what you learned from it, let's say maybe three months later, you found a new job and it was even better than the job before. And what you learned through that was how to actually take a pause and reflect and connect with maybe some of those tender feelings that are natural that we all have whenever we go through loss is how do we grieve that? How do we, how do we identify with that grief and how do we 
really internalize it and really move with that grief. Because really, at the end of the day, life is all about living and understanding and coexisting with all of these things that we go through. It's not about brushing them aside. It's not about forgiving and forgetting. It's not about overcoming or conquering. It's about really getting in touch with what is happening for you, what it means to you and how it is actually shaping your life. So I think it's really important when you're developing any kind of a gratitude or appreciation or having any kind of a practice around that is really getting nuanced about what it is that you've experienced and how you've come through it and what benefits, what tools maybe you picked up through that process. Maybe, you know, one thing I like to say all the time is rejection is actually redirection. So life might be taking you in a completely different direction. And by pivoting that, that door might be closing, but another one might be opening and it might be an even better door. And for me, what I found is anytime I've gone through especially very major events in my life where it just rocked me, um, I know that that is setting me up to almost level up and gain new experience, gain new growth opportunities because, you know, our lives are not stagnant. Even if we believe and think that, you know, we are in a particular job or in a particular situation and nothing has changed and you feel comfortable with that, you're not really growing. So life is constantly presenting you with opportunities to grow. It's just a matter of how do we relate to it? How do we see it? Do we see it as, hey, this is my identity and this is who I am. And when I lose it, then I lose everything. The real goal for me has been to kind of try and put some space there, to really get less attached to a particular idea, a particular job title, a particular you know, benchmark in my own mind about what success or what growth looks like, and just try to stay really open. And when you can do that, you tend to kind of move with the current. You're not really resisting it. You're not fighting it. You're not. So that when job losses happen, deaths happen, um, crisis happens in our lives all the time, we're not as impacted and affected by those things if we can be less attached and create that space. So for me, a gratitude or appreciation practice is something that I do pretty frequently. It's not reserved for once a year around Thanksgiving or the holidays or the new year. It's something that I incorporate into everything that I do. So as things are coming up, I'm noticing how am I feeling? How am I reacting? What am I learning? What tools might I be picking up from that? What maybe old habits do I have that I'm reinforcing and trying to catch those early enough so that I can pivot more quickly? For me, that's really what resilience actually is. It's can we move with these things? Can we move with the current? Or are we trying to put our oar in the water and really resist it and kind of go against the stream? Because what you'll notice is even in that analogy, right? If say you're in a river and you're floating on a raft and you have an oar, the current is taking you somewhere. Now, you will get somewhere a lot quicker if you just put that oar down and let the current kind of take you. But if you start picking up that oar and start start to try and maybe go backwards or go to the side or put that, the minute you put that oar in the water, you are creating resistance resistance to what's going to happen anyway. I firmly believe that these things will happen anyway, but how much resistance are we putting up in front of ourselves is really the question to ask. And, you know, I find that you're able to kind of move and flow with things a little bit more when we're creating less of that resistance. And I find that we can create less of that resistance, the less that we are identified or put our self-worth or our self-identification into something. So meaning this is who I am. Because in all actuality, and and really just to be frank, that's constantly changing. So you have to be able to adapt and you have to be able to kind of move with those currents because the current isn't always flowing in a smooth one direction, right? The more you can stay aware of that, the more, the less you're resisting, the more quickly you're going to be able to get through those things. Um, And it doesn't mean, right? Anytime I talk about this, I actually have known a few people who've had this argument is like, Jen... I just don't want bad things to happen to me. And I get it. Like who really wants to go through death or job loss? Or I don't think many of us are out there kind of wishing or willing this to happen, but it's a part of life. And there's a lot of things that we cannot control. So the more that we can kind of just move with it and allow it, accept it, open to it, 
we're able to move through it a lot more quickly. And again, this is just coming from personal experience, having gone through some pretty big traumas of my own in my life and really doing the work in therapy and really understanding like, how is it that I'm able to move th through things more quickly than I was before? And it feels like it's that resistance piece. Anytime I feel like I'm putting up a roadblock or, you know, I'm throwing my oar in the water, I have to check myself and say, Jen, what are, what are we trying to accomplish right now? What is this resistance going to give me? Is it going to give me more um, resistance? Is it going to cause more roadblocks, more pain, more heartache, more um, defiance, whatever it is? Or is it going to help me move through and flow through this much more quickly? And to me, it's not about preventing things from happening to you. It's about accepting and acknowledging and moving with what what comes. Now, how does this make you a better leader? Now, one of the things that I've noticed in my own life is that the more gratitude and appreciation that we have for ourselves, we're able to extend that to others. I know I've talked about this concept a lot, and it's something that I'm, I'm very passionate about and believe wholeheartedly is that whatever we want to cultivate externally to us, we have to first cultivate it internally. So if we want to show our teams more appreciation, we want to show our families, our friends, our communities more appreciation, want them to feel that gratitude, you have to start with yourself first. And I was recently reading a survey where they interviewed, you know, or asked thousands of people, you know, what is the, um, the, the one thing that they wish they had from their leaders that they don't see? And 60% actually said expressing gratitude at work at least once a year, but more frequently. So people really, really want to be seen. People want to feel like you appreciate the work that they're putting into it. So how does that make you a better leader is the more I think you can start to see and cultivate that gratitude and appreciation within yourself, you'll be able to naturally start showing that outward as well. One of the other benefits of having a gratitude or appreciation practice is that it creates a more humble, more down to earth leader. And who really wouldn't want that? If you're working with someone in a leadership position in a corporation, wouldn't you want to work with somebody who's humble? Wouldn't you want to work with someone who appreciates and values you as a, a human being above all else, not just someone who produces work? but somebody who genuinely cares about you. I mean, I think most people at the core, that's what they're looking for is they want to feel like they matter. They want to feel like they're seen. They want to feel like they have purpose. They don't want to just feel like they're a robot working in a factory, just producing something. Although productivity is a major aspect of working, but people tend to want to be more productive when they feel like they're working with somebody who appreciates them and who makes them feel valued. Now, there's a big difference between feeling valued and wanting to be valued, meaning I'm, again, placing all of my value and worth in somebody else and their perceptions of me and feeling like there's a reciprocal relationship there where I'm producing something, I'm providing value to the organization. And in turn, they're, you know, not only, you know, paying you a paycheck, but also making you feel like you matter and like you belong there. Because at the end of the day, I think that that is the one thing people are are seeking at a very deep, very basic level is people are searching for that belonging piece. And it's quite interesting. I actually had a client I was talking about earlier today who was expressing just that. She was telling me about how she's transitioned into a new organization. She feels like she doesn't have a place in the organization and she feels like her job has really changed and hasn't been communicated very well and she doesn't feel valued. And what that was all saying to me was that I don't feel like I belong here. I don't feel like I matter. And if you can develop that appreciation, if you can develop that gratitude and cultivate that, even during chaotic times, you can extend that out to someone and say, hey, I, I totally understand that you must be feeling stressed out right now and maybe a little fearful because things are a little messy and there's not a clear vision for your role or the organization just yet but I want to make you aware that I see you and that I understand and that you matter to us. And, you know, a good leader might also say, help me understand what you're challenged with and how I can help you through that. 
Um, when you're able, I've noticed also to develop that gratitude and appreciation practice, it creates a lot more space for understanding, it creates a lot more space for you to be able to empathize with people and connect with them on a real and deep level so that people again feel like they matter and like they have purpose. Because if there's one common theme I hear from all of the clients that I coach in corporate settings, as well as many other different settings, education, healthcare, is that they want to be seen. They want to be valued. They want to belong with, you know, the organization or, you know, the, the system that they are working in. And that's something that's really, really important to them. So as a leader, the more you could develop that gratitude and appreciation, not only will you be extending that out to your teams and the people that you work with, but you'll also be creating more space for yourself to do all those other things and be able to really have richer experiences with people. So that again, it reinforces that feeling of belonging. It reinforces that feeling of being seen. And at the end of the day, I think that is exactly what people are looking for, especially from people in leadership positions. Um, people who are leading themselves, people just want to be seen. I can't tell you how many times when I'm in a coaching session, people will just want to verbally process everything that they're thinking about and everything that they're going through. And really, they just want somebody be, to be there to witness it with them, to really empathize with them, to really connect with them and say, I see you. I, I hear you. What you're going through is normal. And it can be totally expected. And if anybody were else in your shoes, they would be going through the exact same thing. And I feel like that's what people want. People don't necessarily want you to tell them what to do or tell them what to be grateful for or tell them that they should be appreciative if they're not really feeling that. And that kind of dovetails into my next comment around gratitude is really be mindful around the toxic po positivity attached to gratefulness. Because Again, I feel like we force that appreciation sometimes when maybe we're feeling like we're in a rut. Uh, we might tell ourselves things like it's going to get better or, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, things are temporary and, you know, think of the positive and not the negative. I mean, there's so many um, cliches that we've heard throughout our lives. And I know I've been told many a times and all I could think about in those moments where, yes, that is true. And I still feel really crappy. I still feel like I need to validate these feelings. These feelings are real. These feelings mean something to me. And when you tell me, you know, just be grateful or just, you know, be thankful for what you have, it makes me feel like, wow, my feelings don't matter. Like there's something wrong with me because I feel this way, but I should air quotes, I should be feeling better or I should be thankful, right? Because there's so many people out there in this world who have it worse than I do. To me, that just reinforces kind of that negative perception and thought pattern that we have. And it's just a, a habit that, you know, I think we'd just be better off without. So, you know, I think that positivity is great. And I think that there are a lot of positive things in the world, but can we hold all of it at the same time and not dismiss ourselves, dismiss others for what their experience is. Because like I've said numerous times, um, anybody who follows me on Twitter probably knows that I've said this is when you tell me that you should just be grateful or you should be thankful for what you have, what you're telling me is your comfort level is more important than what I'm going through, what I'm feeling. And, you know, you want me to just say, okay, yeah, I'm not feeling bad anymore and I'm feeling better because that makes you feel uncomfortable. Be really, really cognizant of are you placing that burden on other people? Are you saying, hey, my comfort is more important than your feelings and what you're going through right now? Um, I'm not saying that we necessarily do this, you know, intentionally, but I think there's a lot of times that we're reacting and showing up in conversations that we don't realize how we might be impacting the other person. So I think gr gratitude and appreciation is a really wonderful thing. And I also think that we need to be able to handle all of it and hold all of it together. I think there is space internally for you to be able to hold gratitude and appreciation alongside those feelings of pain, those feelings of trauma. 
And, you know, I was actually just thinking as I was, I was just talking that oftentimes my therapist will tell me, you know, that's a part of being human is having all of it. And oftentimes it almost feels like a cycle or it kind of circles, you know, imagine almost like an airplane kind of going around in circles. It's trauma and things that have happened to us, especially around, you know, death or job loss. We may have times where we feel great and feel okay. And then we come back around and we start feeling those feelings again. And I think it's just all a part of the processing process where we just need to go through it and it ebbs and flows. It's not a linear process. It's not just like, okay, I've you know, cried about this enough. Now I'm over and it's done. I feel like it really is just kind of circling over and over again. And if you really pay attention, I've noticed in my own life with, you know, my own traumas and things that I've get, gone through is that that's how it happens. And, you know, for a while I'll feel really great. And then all of a sudden I'll circle back to it. And it's like, whoa, where did that come from? I thought I had already kind of processed that. You know, I feel like the more that we do that, the that circle, that sphere kind of widens. So almost imagine kind of like a cylinder, you know, it's, it's, you know, when you're in the thick of the trauma or it's, it's a fresh trauma, you're probably going to be circling around it a lot and, and it, you're going to more, more quickly. Right. But as you go through time and you start processing it, that sphere widens and you, you have more time in between the ebbs and flows of, you know, kind of being in this more balanced state, but it can be blindsiding for some. And I know it's blindsided me before where I, time has passed. You know, sometimes it can be decades, right, that have passed. And then all of a sudden it will kind of creep up again. And you're like, wow, I really wasn't expecting that. So staying true to all of that and noticing and just really kind of embracing it and allowing it to come. And when you do circle back around and have that moment of feeling like you want to fall apart or you want to, you know, just cry or, you know, you're feeling that moment of tenderness, allow it to come and try to be mindful if you are noticing yourself, trying to force yourself to be happy. Um, because again, I, I feel like the more we can open up to that, the more that we can, you know, really connect to those tender parts, those, those painful parts, it allows more space for us to have also, gratitude and appreciation. And I feel like that connection and that space can really happen more easily when we really look at it from a learning experience. So look at it from, like I mentioned earlier, think back to what tools you've gotten from that experience. What, How has it shaped you as a person? What have you learned maybe about how you want to treat yourself or how you want to treat others? Like maybe let's say you went through a really painful breakup where somebody was really unkind to you. What, what did you learn from that experience? And how will then you use that learning and those tools and use it going forward? Maybe you developed a deeper sense of empathy, right? It's thinking to yourself, wow, well, I was treated that way, but I know that that was really painful and I would want to be more mindful if I were ever in that situation in the future to be a little bit kinder, to maybe be a little bit more compassionate in that moment. So there's always ways for us to learn. And I think, you know, anybody who's in a leadership position can really use those tools to help regulate, manage, and govern themselves so that then they can start opening up that space for more gratitude. And, you know, I think people are really craving it, especially through the last couple of years. So much has been going on in the world on so many different levels. It's almost imperative that people in leadership positions need to really develop these skills to be able to connect with, empathize, hold space for their their teams and the people that they manage so that people can really process. Because at, you know, at the end of the day, I think that's all that really needs to happen. What I've learned through many, many hundreds of hours of coaching clients is that a lot of times what needs to happen is just for them to process through it. And I'm just there to witness and listen and hold space for them so that they can do that processing. It's not for me to insert myself and say, you need to be happier or you need to be thankful for what you have. Again, when that happens, take a pause, ask yourself, am I uncomfortable right now? What do I need? How can I stay present with this person? And just stay as open and present with them as possible. And I guarantee you, you will be a really well-liked leader of families, communities, organizations, whatever it is, people just want you to be present with them. So 
whatever you're doing this Thanksgiving holiday, if you celebrate it here in the US, I hope that I would challenge you to actually do a little bit of this reflection and think, try and really connect with those tender parts and try and really explore with yourself, what have I learned from these things? How have I grown in my life because of this? And how can I hold all of this pain, all of this tenderness inside of me while also holding that gratitude and appreciation? And I think what you'll find is that balance will create more space for you to be an even better leader. Well, I hope you enjoyed the show today. I really enjoyed kind of thinking through your gratitude and appreciation, again, especially as we're getting into the Thanksgiving holiday here in the U.S. It's usually something that's on the forefront of a lot of our minds, but can we have that on the forefront of our minds throughout the year, every day, everything that we do and how we interact with others and how we also interact with ourselves? So it was really fun to kind of think through like my own experiences and things that I do. So I hope you found it valuable. And I just wanted to take also a moment to thank each one of my listeners. I appreciate you. Many of you have reached out to me um, and told me about your favorite episodes or, you know, guests that you want to hear again, come on the show. So I'm currently in the process of lining up my guest list for 2022. So there's going to be a lot of new guests, lots of interesting topics. I'm really excited for what the year brings. I will probably do one more episode next week and then probably take off the rest of the month of December just to rest, recharge. Um, You know, I have a lot of stuff going on, so I want to make sure that I'm able to be, you know, really hitting the ground running come January and just start the year off 2022. Still so strange for me to say that. 2022 with you know, um, a full stride and just really rested and recharged mental health is and self-care is something that's really, really important to me. So just looking forward to taking a few weeks off. And I hope you guys are also going to take some time off to rest and recharge. Use this time also to reflect, connect with those parts of you that maybe you have lost touch with and maybe you're not aware of and really start to build that space so that you can show up in a way that brings your whole self and your most authentic self to the world. Because trust me, we need it. And if anybody wants to reach out to me, I have a new website that I launched for this podcast. It's the in the lead show.com. You can find it in the show notes of this podcast as well. Link to that website. You can also reach out to me through my coaching website, coachwithinsight.com. I coach leaders. I coach entrepreneurs. I coach educators. I coach people who just want to discover their leadership potential. And if you have noticed, if you listen to a few of my podcasts, I tend to be on the mindfulness track where I, I, I kind of incorporate a lot of that mindfulness into my coaching style. So reach out to me. Let's have a conversation. If you like what you hear, definitely reach out to me. You can also reach out to me directly at Jen, J-E-N-N, at coachwithinsight.com. And I hope that you all, wherever you are, whatever country you're in, if you are celebrating or if you're not celebrating, hope that you have a great week and you find ways to develop that gratitude for yourself internally so that you can find peace 